Uh, and now we come to the Baltic musketeers. Uh, they were not listened for decades. Uh, uh, we, I don't know how many times we came to Washington together and we are again uh, preparing a trip uh, uh, in April. Our foreign ministers uh, are doing the same right now in some group. So, Richards, how do you feel after all those decades? Uh, how can we make the West listen to us? Mm. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Zhigis, and thank you for organizing this and inviting the, uh, the musketeers to be here and address the distinguished audience. Uh, well, I don't know how many of you uh, were uh, present yesterday at the OWL session, um, but I'm, I'm being known as the somewhat a Grinch in the room. Um, I will give my five cents for inspirational speeches uh, as well. But I think what we have to discuss is practical matters, um, both for political decision making, for strategic set of goals. And in, and in this regard, of course, I will reiterate our commitment. So our commitment to Ukraine is victory, not attrition, and to liberation and not stalemate. That's the fundamental principle. We should not actually bring this topic again up. Uh, otherwise, we're, we're wasting time. And of course, when it comes to the face of aggression, any silence and inaction is actually the ally of the oppressor. And we see the hesitations is something that really provokes the aggressor. Whenever there is a hesitation, there is action from the aggressor. So with this, of course, uh, I, I want to come back to what Ambassador Walker actually said, that we need to create a, a very clear message to Putin. Again, I will be Grinch in this room. Have we actually managed to deliver any message up until now that Putin even considered to look at and, and, and maybe adjust his actions? I will argue no. We have never done that. We sometimes, with our internal decisions, we clap on our shoulders, but it has not no immediate effect on maybe having an impact on what Putin actually his policies are. So with this, I think we have to spend the rest of our day actually setting the goals for the, until the next Kalinovsky conference, what each of us will achieve, Share the best practice. I think right now what we have to do, each of our respective parliaments and, and, and countries, uh, we have to recognize the so-called presidential elections in Russia results as illegitimate and actually put Putin in the same boat together with Lukashenko. That is number one. That is practical thing that we, we can already do. Um, the second thing is, let's review all our bilateral agreements that are still are in existence with Russia. We talk about isolating Russia internationally, multilaterally, but then if we look what kind of archive we have on the bilateral agreements that are still in force, it, it really looks bad like agreements on um, double taxation, agreements in economic cooperation, you will be surprised if you look up all the agreements that your country have signed with Russia for the, let's say, past four years. You know, even some, some coming from the Soviet uh, Union times. And you will be surprised how much still you are attached to, 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 to Russia by legal terms. And this is where I come with the argument that I'm somewhat, uh, I mean, Michael Roth very much said, fed up on certain rhetorics that are coming out of the, the Western politicians. The 300 plus billion central bank assets, we need to confiscate. Well, it's been two years we've been talking about that. Well, I, I see Deputy Speaker is here. He definitely can give the uh, Ukrainian state budget bank account number. And we can wire that funds right now. So the question is why we are hesitating. And the hesitation is again, it invites Putin 
to me, more bolder because it sees the free people are weak. And nothing provokes more of Putin than weakness of free people. And in this regard, I think that is another thing that let's do our homework. Let's review all the bilateral agreements. Um, just now, Estonia followed also Latvia's example. We denounced the legal assistance agreement. that was still enforced since 90s. Obviously, Russia is no country that is abiding international law. We're not even talking about bilateral agreements uh, on mutual respect. Other thing I, I really want to invite on the, on the eve of uh, opening the accession talks, I invite actually uh, Ukrainian leadership to validate all the politician visits to Europe, be it position, be it opposition, that Ukrainians are present in the discussions where EU is making decisions. It's a candidate country already. It has a voice in the meetings. It's not anymore Marco or Zhigis or me have to stand for Ukraine. Ukraine can already speak for itself and defend its arguments as well in room. So I invite not to block any, if there's any uh, disputes as well at the political level. So I'll open the doors to that. And coming back to the messages, I think this is bad news. Putin is more effective in sending messages than we are. I mean, he's clearly indicating he will outlast the West with the patience, um, also with the resources. He's also sending a message that they're there for the long-term confrontation, 8% military expenditure from the, G, from, uh, from the GDP. Isn't that a wake-up call for us? I mean, we just, in Vilnius Summit, made a decision making 2% not the ceiling, but the floor. I very much support what Prime Minister of Estonia is suggesting. It should be already 3%, the floor. If we look at the Cold War, nobody actually bragged about spending 4 5% for the defense. Is this situation right now different? I don't think so. And most importantly, and again, I, I come back to Ambassador Walker. He, he made good points. Uh, um, historical perspective. We also mentioned Kalinowski and his plea to the West to supply weapons as well at the time of the need. And there was hesitation. And that resulted in tragic uh, events. And with, with history, well, we're, we're in a Christian country now. And if we use the words, never again, in the 20th century, we look at the Middle East, we look at Ukraine, I think somebody from above is testing us. Do we really mean what we say? And I think it, we value those things we need to deliver with no hesitation. So I, I invite really to, to spend this day sharing the best practice. Uh, my suggestion as well is for time being, there is a need to close entirely the border with Russia and Belarus. For any movement of goods, be it one month or two months, we'll see the effects. We see that Russia's war machine is fueled not only by imports, but also by incomes, revenues that are making from the transit. And this transit is still on. I mean, the cargoes in their million tons are crossing Russian railroads. So that should be also crippled in a way. So we can really cripple the Russia's economy. And somebody is saying that, I'm sorry, maybe it's, again, going into too much emotional part. But today, we, we heard Zelensky reporting huge attack on Ukraine across the board from the east to the west. 19 rockets. 65 seconds. Yes, and the damp 
so uh, uh, energy infrastructure being particularly targeted. But in the meantime, I read in Financial Times, US is urging Ukraine to halt the attacks on the Russian energy infrastructure on the Russian soil, because that is sparking the energy prices around the world. Where, where, where are we? What is this? So I, I think when it comes to military, again, I'll just reiterate, weapons, 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 and again, weapons. So I'll stop here, and uh, Zhigis, please take it over, continue. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, you always wake up us.